friends welcome to my channel i'm arpita karwa last week i was going through a ton of doubts that students have asked me and i was surprised to know that a lot of students have asked me about ugc net pattern eligibility whether they should fill the form for net or grf what is the cut off how it is calculated and a lot of other questions in regards to the ugc net examination so i thought of uh, making a youtube video where i can directly address all those questions that students have asked me so that others who also have such questions in their brain would find their answers in the same video also i would like you to know that this video is specifically for two kinds of students number one who are very new to the field of ugc net who are not aware of uh, ugc net what is nta what is ugc why net exam is conducted should we give it or not my subject of masters is this and this whether i am eligible for net or not such kind of uh, questions and number two this video is for students who are already appearing for net exam and who know what net is all about but who might find themselves asking a few questions which they are not able to answer or find anywhere else so for all, this video is for all those candidates make sure you watch it till the end because i'm going to take all these questions that uh, people ask me one by one and i'm going to explain that very clearly in this video so let us start with a very basic question what is ugc net exam so let me tell you my friends ugc net exam is given by students who wish to start their career as an assistant professor or lecturer so those who of you who want to become lecturers in any prominent university or college across india then this is the minimum eligibility criteria for you only after clearing net you can sit for the interview for the post of assistant professor or lecturer but it's not just that students who want to become lecturers sit for this exam there's another category student who wish to pursue research or who wants to do phd would also sit in this exam so the students who clear this exam are of two kinds number one those who are eligible to become an assistant professor or those who have got both net and grf that is junior research fellowship so anybody who only gets net that means they are only eligible for the post of assistant professor whereas students who get net and grf both in the same exam they can either go into the research field and get a stipend every month uh, from the government and continue their phd for next 2 3 years or they also have the option to directly become an assistant professor now the next question that might might come up in your uh, head is that who conducts this exam so this exam which is commonly known as net stands for national eligibility test and this is conducted under the guidance of ugc university grants commission the main body that looks over all the universities and colleges across india till june 2018 this net exam was conducted by cbse central board of secondary education but from december 2018 onwards it was conducted by nta national testing agency now if you don't know what is nta let me tell you this is the same body that conducts the most important exams of the country like jee and neet so nta stands for national testing agency a separate body that has been made so that all these major exams can be conducted so you need to remember there are three major people involved three major bodies involved uh, in conducting this exam so we have got cbsc uh, whose role was only till june 2018 then we have nta who started conducting exam after december 2018 and then we have ugc who supervises and looks over uh, net exam so you make sure that you are aware of all these three bodies so that you don't get confused as to uh, why it is called nta ugc net and not just net so nta ugc net is the actual name of the exam by which you will be able to find a lot of information about this exam on google as well now a lot of questions uh, that i get every day comes from this particular section of the video where students ask me that what is the difference between net and grf are these two different exams let me clear that 
net and jrf is basically the same exam you sit for the same exam if you get a particular percentage you clear net if you get a slightly higher percentage then you clear net and jrf both but you have to only give one exam to qualify either net or net and jrf both so basically what happens is that if you look at the examination form that you are going to fill you will find two options either net net and jrf both you have to check mark any one of them so if you check mark net and if you got 54% and the cutoff of net was 50% you will clear net but if the cutoff of jrf was 52% and you got 54 and in the form you have only marked net only then in that case even after clearing jrf you would not be given jrf award letter because you did not check mark that option so if you are under the age of jrf jrf eligibility criteria we are going to discuss in this video but you just need to remember that if you fall under the age of jrf then you should fill net and jrf both if you clear net then you are eligible to apply anywhere across india for the post of assistant professor if you clear net and jrf both it is said to be slightly more prestigious because in that case if you choose to do phd in future you will be given 25000 per month from government of india as stipend so make sure that if you fall under the age limit of GRF, you always mark net and GRF both. There's no harm. Another question that students ask me that suppose the cutoff of net exam is 55 and the cutoff of GRF that year in your subject is 60 and I get 57. So if I fill net and GRF both, will I be getting net or I need to clear both net and GRF? No, let me clear, clarify that. If your marks are 57% and the cutoff of net is 55, you will clear net. And if you score 62 and the cutoff of net uh, is 55 and GRF is 60, then you clear both net and GRF. So there's no harm in checking uh, both the option net and GRF both because even if you fall short of GRF, you will be awarded net certificate. Another question that students ask me that suppose they sat for net exam in June 2021. They cleared net exam. Now the student wants to again attempt for GRF. So he sits in December 2021 for net and GRF both. And he finds that he did not clear net or GRF this time. So will his previous net certificate become invalid? No, it will not. Net is something which is going to have a lifelong validity so if you clear net any time in your life it is valid till the end of your life in case of grf if you want stipend then you have to apply in any university or college within two years of your grf award letter or else you will not be awarded grf stipend so that's the only difference so never make a foolish choice by only check marking net because if the paper is simpler or if you are able to attempt all the questions correctly and if you have not check mark net and grf both even after clearing grf you will only be getting net and in the other scenario suppose the paper was really tough you check mark both net and grf but you only qualified net in that case you will only be awarded net letter so there's no harm in checking both net and grf if you fall under the eligible age of grf the next question that i would like to take up in this video is that who can sit for ugc net exam so let us first understand you can do graduation in either of the three streams science commerce or humanities you can either do bsc or bcom or bba or BA okay so BA is for humanities BBA and BCom are for commerce students and BSc is for science students so people who have done their graduation in commerce or humanities can sit for UGC net exam but students who have done their BSc should 
sit for CSIR net exam and not UGC net exam. So UGC net exam happens in 81 subject which includes all the subjects of science uh, of commerce and humanities. CSIR net is similar to UGC net but the body the governing body is different and that particular exam CSIR net happens only for science students. So if you have done your graduation in science then and if you're planning to do your masters in science, then you should apply for CSIR net. If you have done your graduation from commerce and humanities and you plan to do your post graduation in the same field, then in that case, you should apply for UGC net. This is number one. Number two, when can a student apply for UGC net? So once you have done your graduation, you can either apply for UGC net exam directly and simultaneously you can enroll yourself in a master's program in the same subject for example if i'm planning to write ugc net exam in english then my master's subject master's stream should also be english i should do ma in english and then i can uh, write net exam in english if i want to write net exam in history then i need to do ma in history i cannot do ma in history and write net exam for english so make sure that you understand the fact that the subject of your masters and the subject of your ugc net exam should be same if in case you don't find that out of those 81 subject your master subject is listed then the most similar subject should be opted in case of ugc net so what happens when you have completed your graduation? You either enroll yourself in a postgraduate program and once you've completed the postgraduate program, you sit for net exam. This is an ideal case because in net exam, the syllabus of graduation and postgraduation both are clubbed and asked in the paper. Another scenario is that you can do your graduation and while you are pursuing your masters, you can simultaneously sit for net exam. This is what I did. I cleared my net in the first year of my masters. So that can also be done. You just need to put a little more effort in order to complete your master's syllabus beforehand because that would be asked in net exam. Third scenario is you complete your graduation. You give net exam and then after you've cleared net exam you enroll yourself in a postgraduate program and within two years of your net result declaration you submit uh, your result of masters so the only criteria that you should meet is that once you have get got your uh, net result within two years of that result you should also get your master's degree for example i cleared my net in december 2021 so my master's degree should be there with me by december 2023 so in all the three scenarios you can give net exam once you have completed your graduation, you complete your post graduation, then give the exam. You give the exam while you are in your post graduation course or you give your exam first and then you enroll yourself in a post graduate course. In all the three scenarios, you are eligible for net exam. There are a lot of other questions that students ask me about UGC net like what is the eligibility criteria, what is the exam process, uh, how the cutoff is calculated, what is the paper pattern, is there any negative marking. All these questions would be addressed by me in the next video. So if you have not subscribed to my channel, make sure you do it right now and you also click on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any notification. Apart from that, you can also visit our website arpatakarva.com to check out our our course for UGC net English literature and you will also get past your papers for free on our platform so that you can start your preparation and know how to uh, crack this exam in the first attempt. So that's it for this video lecture. We'll meet very soon in the next video lecture. Till the time we meet next, happy learning, keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpatakarva.com. <laughs>